Yeah, I mean, I like, it looks like a fun show. It's like, oh, he's like, the, the kid's cute. It's like, oh my God. That scene, I remember uh, seeing that scene and you know, like, having read the comics and seen the first episode. And then when I saw that, it was so, I mean, it was, I think it's incredible. It's so beautifully disgusting and shocking. I mean, watching that kid, the actor, just go for it. <laughs> it's pretty incredible. I mean, I don't want to give away a trade secret. Did you guys, what'd you swap out for the roach? Like some uh, Skittles? No, we painted brown. Oh, I, I want the Humane Society to know that we killed like 75 roaches. <laughs> That's the first time I felt sympathy for a cockroach. It's like, oh, a disgusting roach. That is a really amazing scene. It's so incredible. It's actually cool. All the close-up photography of the roach was actually a wall that was like a table. And we had like some roach wranglers. And I would stay back like 15 feet on the set. Because I didn't want to get anywhere near that thing. Because it was huge. And, uh, and they had like the camera on it. And, and uh, Adam Wingard, our director, get real close to me. Nick, can you, can you make it move over here? And I was like, that thing's going to jump on your face. Like, it really was care. cool seeing that extreme close-up of the roach. And really just seeing it in that. I mean, it, the way it's cut is really great. I love... Uh, the sound of the kid holding onto that bar and scratching, like when he scratches his hand first is really great. And it's a really, you know, working with kids can be tough and you're not always gonna get a great performance. And for something like that, it was like, that is amazing. And he's, I'm sure there was some enhanced sound, but still it's like, he went for it, man. It's, it's a really incredible. And it's such a great tone setter. Yeah, and the show it's like, okay, this is what this is about. It's, well, it's, you know, Walking Dead opened with a little girl getting shot. And so, <laughs> You know, you kind of got to get them right in the first few seconds, so I figure a little kid eating a roach is, um, you know, probably a good thing. Also, it doesn't stop there. There's some, there's some more, like, 30 seconds after that where you're, oh, yeah. you're like, oh, oh, oh. Yeah, that's but, uh, but, yeah, it's, uh, I don't like children. <laughs> I like my children. Yeah, I showed my son that scene. He's nine. He didn't like it. <laughs> Wimp? <laughs> that's, what, that's what I said. Um... Was there anything, I mean, were there things along this line, were you trying to at least, I don't want to say tone setter again, I was being stupid, but sure. I mean, were you trying to right away, because the scene that you were sort of alluding to, where it continues, Yeah. because I remember even from the book and the, sh and the, the, the episode, I'm like, that's already pretty fucked up and pretty intense. Yes. And to ramp it up even higher, were you, was that a specific thing you were trying to do for the TV show, as far as having the opportunity to get more cinematic with it and expand more from the book and just, you know, from just having a camera and editing and all that, was that something you were thinking about during the writing and trying to maybe... Yeah, well, I mean, there was a lot of things that worked there. I mean, Exorcism is a very well-worn genre that has, you know, people have seen a lot and, and you might be watching the trailer going, oh, yeah, an exorcism thing. I, I kind of get a sense of what they're going to do, but, you know, we went to great lengths to, you know, expand that genre and add things that, that you wouldn't expect. And to be honest with you, um, when uh, Cinemax uh, read the script and they, and they came on as, as the network, they were like, um, is there any way we can make this edgier? <laughs> and, and I was like, yes, Wait. yes we can. <laughs> and so uh, things got a little bit crazier and a little bit more uh, violent. And, uh, uh, and, and yeah, it's, it's you know, it's going to be pretty intense. And the things that we're able to do just because, you know, it is a, it is a, a pay channel that's not advertising driven. And so Snickers isn't going to call you and be like, I can't advertise on your show. You've got kids <laughs> bashing their heads against the wall and then eating crushed roaches. Uh, we get to do all kinds of crazy, awesome stuff, and it, it's been incredibly free, you know, in that environment to be able to do uh, cool stuff. So I guess I would say, if you enjoy The Walking Dead, you haven't seen anything yet, if I could sound like a marketing shill for a while. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, we definitely uh, cross some boundaries and do some, some insane stuff, as these guys know. I mean, I'm sure there's stuff coming up in future episodes where you guys are like, uh, yeah, yeah. That, that, that's, a, that's gruesome. Yeah, a little bit. We're trying, you set the bar high with the pie. <laughs> well, and it's, it's, that scene in particular, you were asking me before about what drew me to the project. I mean, that, Adam Wingard, who directed it, it's, it, and uh, Gabriel Bateman, the young actor in that, are all great, and it's really beautifully executed, and the music is great, but all of that was on the page. And it was like, when I read that, 
scene, when I first read that script, and that scene is one of the first scenes in the script, it, I was like, I, I didn't even have to read it any further. It was like, I want to meet this guy, I want to work on the show. It I was, demand you be less complimentary. I don't really <laughs> Give it all right. Yeah, it was okay. Okay, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> was there anything else uh, along the lines of maybe some of the things that you were alluding to that you're still going to see from the comic book that was especially cool to shoot and actually see shot or was maybe even things that, oh, that even exceeded how I envisioned it when we were going to shoot it. If if you guys are, are fans of the comic, and I know that all of you are, and if you're yeah. not, go to this yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Very good. So our third episode, which was written by our showrunner here, Mr. Chris Black, uh, actually Woo. tells the... Not too many, but a light amount of applause is appropriate. <laughs> Don't do anything that's going to exceed the applause that I have previously gotten. But, um, the, uh, he's not joking. No, he's not joking. I'm not joking. No, I am. But, uh, no, uh, our, our, I don't want to spoil things directly, but we do the, uh, no, I'm just going to tell you. We do the, the prison storyline with, with Blake and, uh, um, and yes. Luke Masters. Right. And, uh, I mean, you know, there, there's... When I was writing the, the comic and, and writing the pilot, it, it really kind of drew attention to the things that television can accomplish and the things that comic can accomplish and the difference between uh, the two mediums and, and seeing what we were able to do in that episode, I think it vastly exceeds what we did in the comic and, and you know, uh, Lee uh, Turgeson uh, plays, uh, plays Blake right. and is just... Absolutely amazing in that episode, and, and yeah, and I think when you guys see that stuff, it's just you know, it's it's absolutely terrifying and, and just really really cool. Yeah, and it is, and when you it starts with the material. I mean, that was a story uh, from the second or third issue of the comic that we knew we wanted to tell that it was going to be a great story. It was going to make it. Was it? Was it? Oh, man, yeah. I should read them. Um, <laughs> but I, I, I read them. Don't uh, make jokes other. about not reading comics at Comic-Con. Comic -Con, you're you're right. the showrunner of the comic book show. I read them religiously. See, Chris ribs me about this constantly when, they're, when we're in the writer's room, so that's that's why. It's read. a bit, sorry. But I, I make him read the comics, yeah, he whether does. he wants to or not. He comes to my house and makes me read it. He reads Outcast, but I couldn't get him to read Walking Dead to save his life. So. That's, that's not true. Um, <laughs> but no, it was a great story. We knew we wanted to do that story, but you, you get an issue of a comic, as you well know, that it's like, it's, it is what it is. It's whatever, 20 some odd pages yeah. and you have now 60 minutes of premium cable to fill which yeah. you see as an opportunity it's like how can you make more of this how can you add to this how, you don't want to change the story but how can you augment the story how can you can you build upon what the what the comic story was and take it to a place in this medium and, and you know and with the freedom that Cinemax has given us to really push the the boundaries of what you can do on television and, it's and let, let's talk about that for a minute because you know we do have an audience here that is very familiar with the comics and the cool thing about the walking dead is that we do change things and you guys are probably wondering like how are we going to do that with outcast and a really cool thing that we're doing is uh you know the comic is getting adapted and and you know kyle's story and uh reverend anderson's story is, is getting told uh but the way that we're expanding the comic out to fill the you know 145 minutes you have to do on a Cinemax show because there's no commercials. It's really a pain in the ass. Uh, you know, Walking Dead's like 39 and a half minutes, and, but uh, it's like 42 minutes. But anyway, uh, our Outcast episodes are longer, is that we're taking characters like Chief Giles, who is in the comic and does things in the comic, but isn't that large of a character, and expanding them tremendously. We've got Reggie Cathy, who just won an Emmy, uh, who's playing that, who, who was in The Wire. Everybody loves The Wire, but yeah. no one as much as me. Uh, and, uh, uh, you know, we're doing all kinds of cool stuff on that character. And so the overall, you know, story that you love from the comics is getting adapted, but we're expanding the world in really cool ways that's really going to make the story that much better. I, I love doing comics and adapting them into TV shows that make my comics seem inferior. That's what I'm trying to do. Well, it no is, applause there. I thank, yeah. I thank you. Thank you. Well, no, it's, it's creating, that's one of the fun things about working on the show is Robert created this world. It's like you, he gave you this blueprint, this template for what this place is, Rome, West Virginia, and who lives there and what this place looks like and feels like. But then you get to go in that and, and play in it and you discover it and the world kind of, like the whole Chief Giles story is something. We had this great actor. He, he's in the first 10 or dozen issues of the comic. He appears two or three times. Yeah. And you know we, you know we built this whole storyline with him that, that ties him into Kyle's world and brings him and Kyle together later in the season. That's 
you, you, that part of the fun of breaking it and writing it is it takes you places that you didn't always plan at the start of the journey. It, it takes on a life of its own, and that's when you know you're doing something right. It's, I, it's for, one of the things I think is great is, just I'm echoing what you're saying, it's really cool to see that, because there's so many characters, which I imagine gives you lots of opportunities for just different kinds of stories, and one of the things you were saying, which I think is certainly one of the show's strength, is just seeing the stories of these people and certainly how they're affected by what's going on, but just everything else from their lives. And it's really rich and dynamic, and it's beautifully shot also, and certainly well executed as far as the acting and everything else. I mean, just from that scene alone, you see the directing and the editing and the sound, it's all kind of amazing. But I would imagine it's kind of fun from a production, writing, and even performing standpoint. But getting to be this character, and like Robert was saying, where it's a very, very kind of heavy subject matter, it could potentially be just a bummer where it's just too sad in the performance, but there is a layer of this kind of hope that he recognized, and was that something that you enjoy doing on for this character? Did it maintain through the season? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. The, one of the cool things about this setup is that, um, well, I, I mean, like, for most of my career I've done films, and when you're doing films you have, you know, like 90 minutes or whatever it is to go, to take the character through their arc and tell the story and everything. And, uh, sometimes, you know, depending on the writing and the execution, like you said, it's like that could be enough time, sometimes it's not enough time. And with this, what's really great is that we've got 10 hours worth of storytelling to go through to develop Kyle Barnes and to, to develop Reverend Anderson and new characters like Reggie's character and um, it gives you a chance to really take like a hold of the source material right and so you like because Robert's got all this great mythology going on and everything that, that like you know I don't even know all of it yet but I'm like he gives me like the pieces that I need and uh, and we and we go through the paces and everything, and it's like you get to really draw from that source material and use it to sort of flesh out this character, and you build that template, you build that character up, and then you get to just put them through the paces and put them in all these different scenarios, and it gets I mean it gets more and more intense through each episode, and things are escalating and getting really crazy. We're only on episode six right now, and. Um, it is a it is a pleasure, yes. Um, but also, also even to like play things very slowly and not feel like it's got to be like crunch to fit into. Yeah, exactly. Like, you, you don't have to like in a movie. Yeah, you don't have to hit all your like story points in like one scene. Like you don't have to be expository or whatever. You know, you can sort of like let scenes be what they are and develop the character. And, and, or or like one of the things that I've always loved about uh, episodic television is that you get to go hang out with the characters. Like I like I cannot tell you how much I love Star Trek The Next Generation. And, and like, I put it on at night before I go to bed a lot of times just because I want to go hang out on the Enterprise. I want to go like hang out with Picard and Riker and Data. Like, I just want to see what they're up to, you know? Do you say, when you turn the TV on, do you go, hey guys? I, I do. They never, I mean, I know the episodes well enough that I know what they're about to say so I can make it sound like we're having a conversation. <laughs> to this very show? Is that a thing we talk about? Last time I talked about that, you got mad at me. Well, it wasn't public then. Oh, yeah? <laughs> we have. Okay. No, everybody, everybody uh, Sydney, the character that shows up in the second issue of the comic, the hat-wearing mystery man that is uh, working on some uh, evil machinations behind the scenes, is, is played by Brent Spiner, who actually... Uh, yeah. uh, yeah. but, but if you see him in this show, you'll go, that guy played Data? Yeah. This guy's amazing. Like, like it's it's just it's a completely different role for him. We're really excited about having him on board. Yeah. All right. I think we're going to maybe now transition to.